It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. Welcome to the 41st episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. I'm Chronicle Associate Editor, Ooh. Wow. Aaron Van Tile. Did that come with a raise? I see it came with a new haircut. <laughs> it did not come with a raise that uh, I'm aware of, but we'll see. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yikes. <laughs> Joined, as always, by some other editor, Eric Schwartz, and reporter, reporter Claudia Yaw. It's Sunday, March 21st, and I wrote these notes a week ago. It is actually Tuesday, March 23rd. Is that correct? Good that, job. Did I get it? Mm-hmm. Right there? And there's been a news dust up on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this, but the Chronicle took a bit of heat for its coverage decisions from the previous weekend. An Olympia blogger and a podcaster was questioning why the paper sent a reporter to Olympia to cover protests at the Capitol last week. The tweet reads, serious question that I suspect I know the answer to. Does Chronicle cover a lot of protests at the Capitol or just the right-wing 2A ones? Actual serious question. If so, why at Kron Schwartz? Yeah, I got added, and uh, I don't do Twitter because I would just get dunked on. I think that's what I told you. No matter what I said, I I think I'd just step in it. Um, but our protest coverage was kind of driven, because I thought about it, because I didn't think it was heat. I thought he was asking, like, honest questions. Yeah, it sounded a little accusatory to me. <laughs> I know. We, we've got previous history with this 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 Twitter account. This is but, Emmett O'Connell of, of uh, Olympia. He runs the Olympia Standard podcast, which by all accounts sounds like a very good podcast. And he's something of a, we had this discussion, something of a, a news nerd, a yeah. studious news nerd, which but, I respect. But our protest coverage kind of came from Nightcrawler Jared Wenzelberger, our photographer, just grabbing his camera every weekend and either going to Portland or f- to Seattle or to Olympia. Um, and in this case, uh, I knew there'd be some local legislators there, at least I strongly suspected. And so that was, that was the reasoning that I sent him that way. Um, and then also just because, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you care about your local newspaper more than the average person. It was also because Tuesday newspapers are very wide open. <laughs> so <laughs> I was, I was looking for stuff to fill the paper with. Um, and uh, all those factors combined to send them up there. So. Uh, All right. Uh, I think I shared with you once, though, that Emmett once, uh, and I've never met him or talked to him, but he once made a spreadsheet of uh, stories that were being done in Thurston County by the Chronicle and by the Olympian, and we happened to look very good in that spreadsheet at the time. So that's why I say, big fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he does. It does sound like his podcast does a lot of important stuff. Yeah. Um, it is everything this podcast is not. And doesn't hope to be. Yeah. Uh, would you guys like a sports update? Sure. Napa Vine beat on Alaska Saturday in the Who Gives a Shit Bowl. Oh. Uh, no, that. they actually do that. care. But since there is no state playoffs or anything else this year, they called it maybe a regional championship or something. And so what to call this particular game was kind of up in the air. But Napa Vine won in thrilling comeback fashion. In the 28 un- unanswered points? Yeah, they were down 28-14. And on Alaska couldn't convert a fourth and one on about the five-yard line. Napa Vine quarterback Lathan Demarest went 95 yards in the next play for a touchdown. They onside kicked it, got it back, scored again like three plays later, and it was tied, and Napa Vine just kind of ran away with it. It was a good game. Yeah, it's one and one, and one on the season between those two teams. I feel like they got to get back out there one more time. Yeah, I'm going to trot them out there. Why not? Uh, and- Crawler did great video work. We did some live videos. Uh, your story was okay. I mean, Thank you. Just okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. A little, little rusty, I can tell you. Yeah, you know, it took me a lot longer than it usually does. <laughs> but... Crawler knew no ba- boundaries. Like on the sidelines, he was getting in front of the players and coaches, mm-hmm. and just like I didn't know where he was, and he'd like turn around and point his phone up, and he's like right under the head coach. I can like see the spittle <laughs> like coming out onto oh, the field. Uh, not really, because they all had their masks on. But had those masks not been there, spittle. Yeah, uh, Crawler did a great job. Also, Drexel with our boy Zach Walton, the 2015 Morton grad, lost to top seeded Illinois in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So there is no longer any reason to watch college basketball. It's true. Eastern Washington, you know, got beat by an underdog as well. Yeah, and I would also like to take this time to offer a sincere RIP to the great Elgin Baylor. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I- Larry College King of- and Elgin Baylor, the College only two Idaho- national deaths you've ever recognized on this podcast. College of Idaho legend Elgin Baylor. We are both College of Idaho alums. So you went to Albertson's College. It's the same college. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he play at Seattle U, too? Uh, that has never been confirmed. Oh, okay. It, did either of you watch any sports this weekend you'd like to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I watched, uh, I watched Eastern Washington lose t- uh, to Kansas, but it was, it was a very entertaining game. I enjoyed it. All right. Claudia, no sports? Oh, I just hang out here and dissociate when you guys talk about sports, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, I can see you're really eyeballing your cup of tea. <laughs> All right, our first news item... Some county officials alarmed after a symptomatic person makes it to court. This was a Claudia story. Would you like to discuss it? I have comments, but I can throw them in later. Um, Yeah, so uh, there were some alarm bells that were rung. Um, The Law and Justice Center has security guards uh, from a private company that stand at the entrance and screen for regular things like weapons, um, but also during COVID, they're tasked with screening for symptoms. And these officials uh, basically came to the county and said they are not doing their jobs. Uh, And one out of several recent incidences included a man getting waved through security, making it all the way up to the fourth floor to his uh, hearing, and then announcing to court officials that not only did he have COVID symptoms, but he had severe COVID symptoms. He had a fever and he had lost his sense of taste and smell. So I think that was just really frustrating to um, court administrator Susie Palmatier as well, who was the one voicing those complaints to county commissioners. All right. So why does the county outsource security to the building that also houses the sheriff's office? This was my unrelated topic question. That's a good question. I don't know if I have a great answer for you. I don't know the answer to that either. I imagine it has something to do with costs. Um, Mm -hmm. It's probably cheaper to contract than to pay like a trained Mm -hmm. deputy to stand out there all day. That is just my assumption. Another answer might be, I mean, the sheriff's office um, regularly brings up the fact that they're understaffed. And so they might, I would expect that they would probably make the argument that since they're already understaffed, there might be better things for them to be doing Mm -hmm. than kind of that basic security work that doesn't require as much training. Yes. But I'm not an expert. That might be wrong. All right. Yeah, that was just, that seemed like a fairly... Another interesting wrinkle. uh, Our reporter, Emily Fitzgerald, was in the room at the time, uh, in the courtroom when all of this was going down. And I told her after the fact, you can leave. And I think she just instead just like held her breath. And like, oh my goodness. Like moved. Like I would personally probably would have left the room. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm a coward. Well, I but. think they told the guy immediately, like, get out of here. And I think people I filtered so. out pretty quick after that. Paul Matier, is that how you say her name? Anyways, um, that might be so. wrong her well. description of the gentleman was he's sweating, he looks terrible, and he reports to the judge that he's sick, doesn't feel well, and that he reported it to security. He has no sense of taste or smell and was allowed through all the public areas and into the courtroom. So it's like a guy basically just screaming, I have COVID. Yeah, it sounded <laughs> yeah. like he was just yeah. reading the COVID pamphlet. <laughs> it also just looked it at the same time. <laughs> yes. yeah, so. Also notable is uh, Susie went back and, and could view all that footage and basically said... We've looked back at the video and all of these recent incidences where people have told us that security has just waved them through is true. You know, that that's her perspective from going back and looking at that video is that it's not that they weren't there. It's not that they never had the discussion, you know, from her perspective, security mm-hmm. n- knew all those things. Okay. I also, this is just a question I had after I read your story and it was published, is I hope Emily doesn't get a bad time. She's our, she's our court and cops reporter, and I just imagine next time she ends up, you know, looks like we're going to have to do the deep check this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I don't wait think, in this room. I don't think they're going to be there. Uh, that, that security company, I, I don't think they're going to be here for long um, mm-hmm. because today the county officially, like, put out their uh, request for proposals or whatever, officially looking for gotcha. an alternative company potential job for you Aaron I know you're looking (laughs) I always am yes uh yeah the security company at first glance it looked to be like half of the company that the husband got into divorce or something that is correct which is always questionable so no website no home uh office 
phone number. All which, right. As a, I feel like as a reporter that. As the kids would say, is, sus. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, while county commissioners have questioned whether court operations should be discontinued in Morton, Commissioner Sean Swope also mused with the idea of using a new security contract to also provide service to Morton and Lou, the town's local police force. I think that comment was supposed to go on the next story, which we will talk about now. (laughs) District court judges say Morton Police Department's stance on masks is undermining court proceedings. So the Morton Police Department's resistance to wearing masks is undermining the district court's ability to provide service to East Lewis County. According to judges and puppets for the liberal shadow government, R.W. Buzzard and Wayne <laughs> oh, Carlson. Clearly the two furthest left-wing judges in the county, as we all know. Aaron is being sarcastic, I think. Yeah, R.W. Buzzard was the judge that chased down a suspect. And yes. I believe also... Which is relevant to the security yeah. story. Yeah, because yeah, there was much. no... <laughs> <laughs> security guard at the time to go after these guys. Uh, yeah, and I believe he also what was his? He had a kept a gun in the office and enjoyed well, he, a, he packs heat. I think. I yeah. mean, I mean, I I think he still does to this day. I don't know, but mm-hmm. in, if I remember correctly, part of the reason was the security out in Morton is he didn't like the idea of not being armed if someone else were to come in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was other elements too. He actually came to us when um, uh, former editor Natalie Johnson had written a story about some problems in the the Lewis County Superior Court with the judges and um we were running that those stories um and he came to us and like admitted you know he had been drinking in his chambers and a few other things um mm-hmm. but i mean to his credit he brought that to us it wasn't something we found and he wanted to be clear and get it out there which is to say he is probably one of the least likely to complain about something like masks unless it was a serious issue in his mind. Right, or for his staff as well. I mean, I, I don't know the... I think clearly, um, if you read the story, it's a, a big issue for Court Commissioner Tripp. Was concerned, even stunned by the attitude of the auxiliary officers, um, which I, the extra detail that you included here, Claudia, was very great. Um, when the officers were asked a third time to mask up, neither made any response. One just stared at her, and the other refused to make eye contact. Uh, <laughs> oh. This is not a great look for the Morton Police Department. No. I liked that the judges included the detail that the officers are also often late and old and frail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not to age shame or anything, but, you know, probably not the most staunch security. Did Chief Morningstar say what he didn't think was entirely true? He was pretty tight-lipped. Okay. No. So there was no accusation as far as that didn't happen. He just said, well, that's not entirely how it went. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I think he he pretty much repeated a lot of the stuff that was in the judge's letter of, well, if you have a medical condition, then you are exempt. Um, And I've been in the courthouse or that facility without a mask, and it hasn't been an issue before. He also, one of his main reactions was, well, Morton Police Department provides this security at no cost to the county. Yeah, he had some interesting reactions. None of them were... Yeah, that was an interesting place to start. They weren't necessarily justifications. It was like, look, it's it's free. And also, I go in there without a mask, which probably not the proper response. I don't really know. And I always feel the need to throw this out there because it's true. And I think if a person's listening and they like Morningstar, um, I think a lot of people in Morton probably agree with him, unfortunately, in my opinion, that the masks aren't necessary or even that they're harmful. And that's not true at all. I, I don't, haven't seen a bit of science to back any of that up whatsoever. It just doesn't plain make any sense mm-hmm. um but it's not it's not he's not on an island so to speak yeah. um in his area yeah no he's not but on the other hand if judges are coming into your town to provide a service and save people a trip to the big city you know do what the judges say i mm-hmm. think that's kind of the point of court and i think like since it's a a county service not legally, but kind of on the ground, I feel like the county has to take those restrictions a little more seriously and enforce them a little harsher, you know, just because they are more higher up. Like, it would be easier for a small town police department to not enforce that mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. a county judge. So I always I, think, too, like, aside from that issue, just 
if so if you're a police officer and I got this my dad he's a pastor and I he didn't know what to think of the mask at first and his but his reason for doing it was it's the polite thing to do mm-hmm. and other people think that it it's needed so if I'm not doing it then I'm making them feel less safe so it's a no brainer you put it on and I just feel like that would transfer to law enforcement where you're always trying to make you people feel so. safe is yeah. your job yeah um, you would think so, so maybe not be as adverse to it that's just my personal thought but. I know others think differently. I feel so bad for folks who are just in the position where they have to enforce it and with people who are being really resistant, mm-hmm. are not being respectful of that policy. And I was working for months during the pandemic at a grocery store and it was super not fun. Like dealing with those situations, it's so confrontational. You feel very disrespected. It's not a good situation, so I really yeah. empathize. And they often will put it all on you as the employee. As totally, well. it's like <laughs> I don't make these rules. I don't <laughs> make the these picture. rules. Yeah, I don't work for corporate Trader Joe's. I'm just a crew member. I was going to ask if it was a Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. <laughs> it was a Trader Joe's. <laughs> so, do we think Morton will continue, or the county will continue to provide the service to Morton, or should they just cancel it? I'm kind of in the opinion that, look, if Morton doesn't give a shit about it, why should the county? Foot the bill for sending Two a judge S-bombs out there. And the, geez. Well, I mean, going off the rails here. <laughs> I don't think you can like transfer those officers, like them not giving a shit, to the entire community. Like it is a. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Just joking. It is um, a big, a nice, convenient thing. Yeah, to not have to drive all the way to the Twin Cities to go to a hearing. I say just stick a fork in it because we've learned Zoom now and if they can set that up out there Mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about security for anyone anymore. Mm -hmm. I also think that for court, like if you don't have to drag someone up from the jail and put them in front of everyone and go through all that time, it seems like that would save some effort Mm -hmm. and maybe even expense. I don't know what the staffing level is for that. But if we've learned to do all these things, why not uh, apply the things that we we have? I know the system for video court wasn't cheap if I remember reading about it it was implemented so yeah. yeah just keep it let it ride well morton has been relying on like cassette tapes ah, so i feel sweet. like it would be <laughs> it would be a big re-up it would be maybe a bigger endeavor to switch to zoom uh, a bunch of cassette loyalists gonna handle all their court <laughs> business in east lewis county now great i read that and i was like what i did like check that the article actually was from like 2017 and not like 2001 <laughs> yeah it happens so our next news item, Lewis County is faring better at vaccine distribution. A month ago, the county was 39th, uh, gentleman's last place in vaccine distribution, which sparked action from officials to get doses pumped into southwest Washington, and now no longer in last place, Woo-hoo! 34th, 35th. Great job, Lewis County. I think, yeah, I think we, we might have even uh, bumped up since he wrote these notes. Oof. Yeah, pretty. I did see stuff. a heat map for vaccines, and we're still we're still lighter than most of the state. Um, I have no other data to go with that. It was a it was oh, an it was Eric Rosane story at hmm. PNBN. Oh. Um, Just the visual. <laughs> it was Scamania in Lewis County, and then there was a county over in the the east side that were still slightly like everybody's kind of catching up with each other, mm-hmm. and it's kind of this deep shade of blue. But mm-hmm. we were just yeah. kind of lighter. But yeah, I think the the discrepancy between like last place and the state average is also shrinking. So mm-hmm. that's good. We're like that means that if you're in last place, it still sucks, but you're not as you know. You could say we're flattening the curve. I guess you could say that. Hmm. Remember that phrase from, you know, a year ago? I do. <laughs> should we talk about Paul Dunn's dog story? Yes. It's so good. Of course we should. Thurston County dog gets unwanted flight courtesy of Eagle. I will just read the opening of this. Rainier, a miracle dog, mostly unshaken after being snatched by a large bird. Once upon a time in Rainier, Honey ventured where no little dog had ventured before. One minute, she was on the ground, minding her own sniffing business, and the next, she was suddenly flying. After several minutes, she was falling. And so ended Honey's (laughs) not-so-excellent adventure in the sky. So, so good. Paul Dunn just... Wow. Oh, man. Paul Dunn is... He's a veteran. He has his own style of writing, too, that cannot really be mimicked at all and you mm-hmm. can't really be learned and I was I was telling Claudia here before we started the podcast today um, those who read the story at yamonline.com were treated to a, a much <laughs> different lead he went a bit gonzo with it the, the done cut yeah the, yeah it's the director's <laughs> cut the done cut and 
I mean, if you want, I can I can give you a little. <laughs> I can give you a taste <laughs> Please, of it. It's here. So good. It's really good. Trust me. Um, and the reason I, I I edited it for the Chronicle crowd is I just wanted to make it more of a hard news lead in one of them. And so, anyways, once upon a time in the Emerald City of Oz or er, Rainier, Honey the Cutie Pie ventured where no little doggy had ventured before. One minute she was on the ground minding her own sniffing business, and the next she suddenly, well, let's let her tell the story. <laughs> We, I'm flying. I am flying. Wow, just like a bird? Uh-oh, hold on a minute. I was just on the ground and holy smokes, I can't fly. I'm a dog. <laughs> How did I get up here? And what are those sharp things digging in my back? Ow, are those claws? Yikes, now I'm falling, 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 straight down. And my little ears are sticking straight up. I'm so embarrassed. Plunk. <laughs> it keeps going, too. I mean, there's Stories there's like this make though. me, like, so proud to be doing journalism in a, in a rural place like because that's a story that we like we could have only written yeah in a rural mm-hmm. setting mm-hmm. it's awesome yeah it was it was really good and the story was basically an eagle picked up this guy's dog and took it on a ride <laughs> he says the dog was up for five minutes but i have to think it was one of those like traumatic experiences where yeah. kind of stretched time because five minutes would be a long time to be flying around yeah, the, the eagle would have been gone i would think so eagles go fast but that's that's uh that's what it said anyways, but then the, it, he dropped it. The guy couldn't find it for like an hour, hour and a half, and eventually found it just shivering in a swamp and <laughs> saved it. It was, a, it was a good story. I liked that they talked to, um, was it WDFW? Yeah. And asked, like, why would this go for a dog? That's very unusual. And it turned out, like, it probably was a juvenile and didn't know what the heck it was doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, <laughs> Was, they said it was like, since he was young, he was more likely to take risks. And I was like, just like us. He was exactly. just a little bugger. Wow. We had some uh, truthers in the comments saying that the whole thing was impossible and couldn't have possibly happened because uh, the dog was too heavy, which is a thought that I had when That's I looked so at rude. it. That's so rude. Um, but I think the issue was, in the story, it said the dog was like 12 pounds. And I was looking at that dog. It does not look like a 12-pound dog. But... Anyways, there was some. There, it was not without controversy, but it, it was our most popular story for the week. And uh, King Five, I believe, um, did reach out and ask if they could have our images, and I told them no. Good. You come. <laughs> you come here for your dog news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff from Paul Dunn, as always. He'll be uh, more of a fixture here at the Chronicle beginning in April. He's going to be shifting from the NVN to a freelancer role, and he wants to do some shooting for the Cron. So. Well, people are going to hear this and take their dogs outside and hold them up <laughs> with their heads. I want Paul Dunn to write about Fluffy. <laughs> That guy, uh, not to heap more praise, but I'm going to. I've never gotten more messages than from his stories from the subjects. Just like, thank you so much. Like, because he doesn't know how to write like a 900 or even a you know thousand word story. If he's really interested, it's going to be about three thousand words. <laughs> um, he's going to take his own photos, and it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a trip. So, <laughs> great stuff. The last thing I had on our news items list was about the. Public test of Lewis County's election software being open to the public, and I wanted to know if you sent someone over to hold Larry's toes to the fire, so to speak. <laughs> no, I didn't. I did. Uh, hmm. Claudia did write the brief news item up, letting other people know that they could go check it out for themselves. Um, um, but no, we we did that a few years ago, and I I still use the file photos from that from time to time. Nice. Do you think if nobody showed up for the public test, Larry would still have it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, he would. I'm sure he would. I think by law. Yeah. He would have to. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't really have a choice there. But I'm sure, (laughs) as Aaron was driving, that Larry's very good at his job and and would not cut a corner. Is that what you were? He he does great work over there. Tales from the Takes page, a.k.a. the opinion section. We start with an absolute Brian Mitke heater. Mitke's commentary, we are the someone to bring back beloved park. And Mitke has never been more in his bag than he is here. They may have well have put up whatever the Mitke equivalent of the bat signal is for this one. Uh, he's talking about Westside Park in Chehalis, and he says, In short, that park is the little piece of the good life if you're a kid or a parent. Yeah. Mitke, just... Uh, he's the columnist of the week, by the way. Michael Wager is bitter about it as well. He was in here yesterday uh, complaining that he was no longer the, the columnist of the week. But that was a very popular little story, and I think it's because people like that park. I love that park. I've got memories at that park. Yeah, I so played, so, played some ball over there when I was a kid. It's a simple, simple little park, but uh, there was one commenter on Facebook who said, leave it alone. It's fine as it is. Well, there, yeah. 
<laughs> it's literally, it's the Rotary Club is thinking about doing something yeah. with it. No one's going to raise your taxes to make this nicer. No, I think they, maybe they just liked it simple. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want any fancy new playground equipment or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that old equipment with, you know, an element of danger. Yeah. What an actual it's, Grinch. Like splinters. <laughs> you know, that's, that's part of the business. Yeah, it's a cool little park. Yeah, the Penny Playground gets all the, the love and support over there in Chehalis. Penny and Playground. Little, little <laughs> West Side. Yeah, a little West Side Park. It also had a really cool name. Like, if you were growing up in the 90s and you were a teenager, <laughs> yeah. if you were at West Side Park, you're like, hell yeah. A lot of W's got thrown up there. <laughs> Tons I'm sure. of W's. <laughs> Not so much today, I'm sure. But Yeah, sometimes you just got to, you know, crank up the bass in your 1992 Acura Integra, <laughs> roll over there with your freshly polished 16-inch chrome wheels, mm-hmm. hang out at the park. You know, these are things kids did. It's true. And now we move on to Michael Wager commentary, where he says, Liberal, question mark, my re inner self wins out over drug possession controversy. In this column, Michael debates his re libertarian, and liberal leanings. There's a trademark next to that re by the way. Yeah, he, he invented it. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of his lines is, I was against the county, led by Sheriff Rob Staza and Prosecutor Jonathan Meyer, going against the court ruling, I thought, in my best President Biden imitation, come on, Lewis County man, follow the law of the land, follow the Supreme Court ruling. I read it in Biden's voice as well, and it was fantastic. I actually I, liked that part. I disagree. I feel like <laughs> if you have to list off what you're trying to impersonate and just writing a line of text... Like you're failing. Like you gotta, no. you gotta, no, you gotta play it through with just the words. I disagree. I enjoyed it. So is Michael losing his fastball? People are, people are asking. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's already committed to a follow up column next week about pot money. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know, man. You got a drug expert over here. Yeah. Um, I will note that I removed the word libtard from his column. Smart move. Uh huh. And it was. Um, it, I mean, I came and asked Claudia even just to make sure. Sometimes I feel like she's my conscience in the newsroom and I'll do horrible things you're, if I don't run it by someone else. You're woke conscious. <laughs> like, like uh, anyways, we had a letter writer once used that word and I got a call from the mother of a, um, a mentally challenged uh, son and man, by the end of that phone call, I had decided I felt bad about myself. <laughs> I don't yeah. think, yeah, I don't it's a think I'll screwed use up that again. term. Yeah. But he, in his, not in his defense, but to explain where he was coming from, he thought if he was using it against himself in the column that it would go over fine because mm-hmm. in, we, we know that that's not the case. So, uh, Yeah, it doesn't. He, well, he could have just listed off in the headline like, you know, Limtard in my best Rush Limbaugh imitation. <laughs> Still bad. Yeah. Still bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Rush is dead. And, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why. Okay. Yes. So, yes, we will determine next week whether or not Michael's fastball has dropped down to sitting in the mid-70s. Well, they're not all home runs anyways. <laughs> sometimes you get a single. Sometimes it's a double. Uh, I need to, Mickey's just, I, Mickey's kind of eating his lunch, man. <laughs> if people keep trying to bring back parks. Mickey's going to be just <laughs> riding high up there. <laughs> And our last column is from Dr. Richard Stride. Uh, His headline is, Whatever, Boomer. Is there a t-shirt for that? (laughs) One of the lines in it, T-shirts are the nonverbal windows into the souls of our personage. Just like the people that wear them, T-shirts can make us angry. They can make us laugh. They can make us cry. They can make us stop and think about what's really important (laughs) Can they make us cry? Uh, Obviously. Probably. (laughs) Uh, so he talks about boomers and millennials and eye rolling, and I'm here for it. I'm 100% on board with judging people based on the clothes they wear. <laughs> I, a t-shirt is just the the book cover to the soul, really. If we're approaching this column as like the fastball, has he lost his fastball? I would say that this is Dr. Stride. Uh, he's trying out a knuckleball here because he, he told me when he sent the column that his wife had encouraged him to write about lighter subject matter. Mm-hmm. And the last one was about literally how to avoid a civil war. <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty dark. Um, and so this was, yeah, this was, this was something lighter. So what's, let's all talk about a t-shirt that made us laugh one time. What do you guys got? I have one in mind. A uh, t-shirt that made me laugh? Yeah. Um, I had a, a Dr. Dre the Chronic t shirt mm-hmm. that I wore publicly <laughs> once. <laughs> you wore it more than once. No, no, no. I wore it publicly once uh, and was, yeah, threatened. Roundly mocked. <laughs> did, you, did you wear it to Westside Park and <laughs> get your ass kicked? Uh, better, it was a Bubba Sparks concert in Portland. So Wow. Uh, I didn't think <laughs> you could come off work looking any worse after that. It was my sentence. Dr. Dre shirt at the time where I had a Ronald Reagan shirt. So, 
Hey, I'll make you guys cry with these shirts. Uh, Claudia, have you ever seen a notable t-shirt that made you laugh, cry, or other? I got emotional about a shirt, but it was because of uh, my partner's uh, like aunt, who is so, so sweet, handmade mm-hmm. me a shirt. And it was like a, a print that she had made of her dog, Birdie. And so it was just like Birdie's face. Uh-oh. And it said Birdie. And I just thought That's it was good. really sweet. Well, that is sweet. We were looking more for the kind of T-shirts that maybe somebody purchased at uh, at a T-shirt shop on spring break or something. But I, my favorite one is Ty and I were at Costco a couple summers ago, and there was a guy, probably in his 50s, bigger guy, and he had a T-shirt, and the back of it said, Friday is my second favorite F word. And so Ty made sure he wasn't looking and then went and stood by him, and I took his picture. <laughs> and <laughs> it was great. It was hilarious. That's really cute. Former Chronicle reporter Marquise Allen and I would trade T-shirts for that we got at Goodwill for a few years. Mm-hmm. And my favorite that I still have is big orange shirt and just says in block letters, "Don't bro me if you don't know me" across the front. That sounds like something Pete yeah. Castor said all the time too. Yeah, I've I've worn it once. That was it. Well, you should bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I knew what happened to my Dr. Dre the Chronic shirt. To be honest, you should wear it to your next meeting with Dr. Richard Stride. I could. Mm-hmm. I should come up with some sort of great T-shirt for that. Probably not like a medical appointment, but, you know, just for like a, a meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I also have a Mount St. Helens T-shirt I'm very fond of. That's, uh, it's got a, um, the official, what does it say? The official St. Helens inspection team. Um, and the, the, it's an acronym for Oh Shit. <laughs> and <then> it's got <laughs> a picture good. of the mountain exploding on it. Jeez. A friend of mine bought that for me. Pretty, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, business future roundup. Ash and Roberts dentist, welcome back. Happy patients. And I can't get the link to open right now, but it was a great story about a local dentist's office. Yeah, no, it was mostly just about how they. It was a story by Emily Fitzgerald. It was mostly about how they've been navigating the the pandemic, and I don't think we've really written about a dentist yet. So it was an interesting perspective, just going all the way back to the beginning of it when they kind of had to shut everything down. Um, And I know a lot of dental offices were offering their PPE to hospitals, Mm -hmm. and it was that whole time period. And bought, like, new technology that they're using if they're doing um, oral surgeries in there now that kind of sucks everything out and prevents it, you know, stuff from floating in the air. And, um, no, I thought it was good. It It was an educational piece, for sure. All right. Any other business features I may have missed? No, I don't think so this week. Um, we're, we've kind of briefly gotten away from the having a business feature in every edition. Um, I, partially is just like practical. We're looking to hire a reporter right now. But the other side is most businesses have reopened. And some of the stories are start to become repetitive in a lot of ways because they're kind of just – there's only so many times you can write, this industry had to do this, and then yeah. now they're doing this. Um, so we're going to get back to it, though. I, I know I know Claudia and the team just loves writing business features. Just, so. It's my favorite. Um, just itching to get back out there. We do have some in the works. We've got mm. uh, Maximilian Motorsports out in Chehalis um, working on a story on them on an apprentice program they have that results in a four-year master's degree, I believe. Um, and they've invested in electric cars and hybrids and that kind of thing. Got an email just today from a new business that's planning to bring a arcade slash bar slash eatery, I believe, to downtown Centralia. Um, so that one will be cool as well. All right, great. People's Champion of the Week. I have two suggestions. <laughs> oh, jeez. First up, the Irish. <laughs> Played some bagpipes last week. It was St. Patrick's Day. The number Good one comment them. on that was, aren't bagpipes Scottish? And the band was Scottish. I excluded that detail from my story. <laughs> oh, how dare you? Because I didn't want to call them out. Well, <laughs> it's still part of the theme. I mean, I think that's one. It's a cool thing I think O'Blarney's does because there's not really like a local celebration for St. Patrick's Day. Mm. So like, I, if you want to go out and do something, you can go to an Irish bar and listen to bagpipers that might have some Irish heritage. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It's and the good. other People's Champion of the Week nominee is Local Experimental Aircraft Association awards scholarships to three Lewis County high schoolers to pursue their pirate, pilot, pilot's licenses. Not a pirating license. You don't need a license for that. <laughs> Henry Jordan from Chehalis, Tim Bowes from Mossy Rock, and Henry Reed from Chehalis were all awarded money to put towards flight lessons or other expenses as they work towards getting their pilot's license. 
my one takeaway from this was that we have a local experimental aircraft association. That sounds <laughs> far more dangerous than it probably is. Uh, yeah, we've written about them several times before. I think they're the ones, um, if I'm not mistaken, aren't they the ones that give the kids rides at the airport once a year? It's, I think it's usually part of Chehalis Fest when they do that. Uh, yeah, that's their non-experimental division. <laughs> just use planes that, they're, you're just that getting, they know work. You're just getting hung up on the name. I Imagine am. being in high school, though, and being like, oh, yeah, I can fly a plane. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I would feel so cool. I was shocked at how, like, it's not extremely rare. Like, because we mm-hmm. did a story on a girl at the NVN who was 15, I believe, and maybe had just turned 16, and had her pilot's license. And I, so, like, I was like, that's super interesting. Let's write a story on it. And then I got several calls from other parents. They were just like, my child is also a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, Dang. must be nice. Driving yeah. is scary enough for me. <laughs> All right. You ever been in an airplane, Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had me, guys. Uh, no, I don't. I still. You know what? I don't believe the science on airplanes. I just don't see how if you make the wings shape one way, they make you fly. It makes no sense to me. Really, more of a train guy. Yeah, it makes sense. The sirens, bangers of the week. It's really just a bunch of like, what do you want us to do about it? Type of stuff. There was a possible scam reported where a male with two kids in the car told the caller that he lost his wallet and tried to sell her a fake gold chain. The man reportedly left after the caller flashed her badge at him, which makes me wonder if, like, was a cop calling this in? Were they just hmm. just calling to tell their pals about it? I don't Could really be. know. Uh, I'm gonna Could have sk- been, like, an employee badge. Yeah, I'm going to skip the next one. And then the last one is a caller reported receiving threats via phone from a family member they hadn't spoken to in over 20 years. Just imagine, like, your uncle you haven't spoken to in 20 years calls you up out of the blue and threatens you. <laughs> He's like, how, how do you find me? That would be, yeah, that'd be rough. So, yeah, kind of a lame week for crime, which is good. Yeah, no, we like that. Um, I, I mean, obviously there was other crime, but not the kind of stuff we're going to make light of. Facebook comments of the week. The first topic is Nightcrawler's live video from the Onalaska Napafine football game, where uh, the overwhelming majority of the comments were just people asking what the score was. <laughs> That's a fair question, but with those live videos, you, everybody joins at different times. So, like, if Crawler turns it on and it's just like, it's 14 to 6, and then, like, 100 more people join on, and mm-hmm. he kind of just, like, to make them all happy, mm-hmm. it's 14 to 6. It's 14 to 6. <laughs> it's 14 to 6. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, well, luckily, the game was not broadcast or reported anywhere else on any other <laughs> social media media. No. No, there wasn't anything else. Oh, Aaron. This well, next one's gnarly. Yeah, it was a terrible comment from probably a terrible person. Uh, This is, somebody is saying choose the behavior, choose the consequences on a story about a teenager almost dying from a drug overdose situation. These always drive me nuts because, like, where do you get off, like, blaming somebody for something like that and making it, well, you shouldn't have done that. It's like, yeah, I'm sure they know that. Like, you don't need to jump on Facebook and just remind people that you're an asshole. Although that's what <laughs> most people on Facebook are doing. Uh, I, my, my thing is, just even take drugs out of it. Like every, Virtually everyone does something extremely stupid when they're young. Like, if, you have, if you're doing it right, you've probably done multiple stupid things. While you're, uh, you don't even have to be young. It's, it, it's not a death sentence <laughs> to do something dumb. And I don't think, in this particular case, it was a story about uh, fentanyl kind of resurfacing out in Grace Harbor County and them thinking that might be a sign that it's returned to the region in greater amounts. Um, and it, it sounded to me that the, the kid thought he was taking something else and mm-hmm. not that that makes it okay. And that it was laced with fentanyl. So that they're both problems, but the larger problem to me in this situation would be the fact that fentanyl is getting added to other things. And yeah. Yeah. So our view, Skookum Jug Dam has attention of the Chehalis Basin board. One of the comments, who is the loony that the dam does not provide flood protection? The mini high water storms proved it does. It goes on and on and on. But our woke pencil pushing loud cancel culture will prevail because that is their whole purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I don't think the woke pencil what? pushing loud cancel culture is weighing in on the damn one way or the other. I went back and looked because I was curious about that. And that, I mean, pretty much every time we, we haven't written about that damn very much, which is interesting, but it's, it's up and away. The last time we wrote about it, they were doing some like SWAT training out there. Um, but it is, it's not designed for flood protection. It does provide some incidental flood protection. Um, but at a certain point, it, water will literally spill over the top of that thing. So it's, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's not. Anyways. Uh, another comment on that one. I tuned into the last board meeting, and it's a circus that shouldn't be making decisions. I honestly don't understand how the board members get dressed every day. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> what a burn. 
And then a woman accused of texting, being intoxicated, and crashed near Chehalis faces charges. And the comment was, sort of reminds me of what happens to an Antifa or BLM participants involved in multiple of crimes after a march in PTL or Seattle. Thankful her children didn't suffer any serious injuries other than fright and long-lasting mental anguish. It's a reach. I think you could have just <laughs> cut the whole first sentence out. Like, I don't know what Antifa or BLM have to do with car crashes. That's like my, yeah, my biggest pet peeve is like when people just are literally swinging for the fences to talk about quote-unquote Antifa. Like, yeah. this was a story about a car crash. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> It's got to get it in there somewhere today. The story, incidentally, had a lot of urine in it. More than the average story, I, I will oh. say. Well, I, those, <laughs> I guess uh, I should have read it all. Those Black Lives Matter activists and their bladders, right? You're totally right. Huge connection there. I was trying to move it along. <laughs> that is our last Facebook comment. Only of this week. I'm sure there will oh, be more few. next week. So anything you guys want to mention to wrap up? Anything I might not have put on the notes because I wrote them again on Saturday. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, we could talk a little bit. We're going to have for the paper. Claudia is working on the return of the Shanghai. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, the Shanghai Cafe. Oh, my buddy Brooks is pumped. Yeah, grand opening on Monday. Um, I thought it was just an interesting story in that the family that uh, bought it normally flips houses. And they bought this really without even realizing how much history the restaurant had. And then their daughter basically Googled it and was like, mm. oh, my gosh, this place has been around for like 100 years. And so then they decided we're going to keep it as a restaurant. We're going to you know, talk to the old owners, get the old recipes. So that was kind of cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, people have always been really passionate about Shanghai. Like they love that downtown like it's kind of an odd spot for a restaurant like it's a couple blocks out of downtown mm -hmm. but you know it's been there forever and yeah everybody that eats there seems to really like it i'd have to check but i believe it was the oldest restaurant in centralia when it went out of business it had been here longer than any other restaurant that, yeah, had, that remained open we had wrote that it was also like widely believed to be mm -hmm. the oldest chinese restaurant in the state yeah yeah i think huh. brian mitke wrote that yeah. i'm well, pretty he sure he'd be the one to know yeah. yeah i bet he will write a column when it reopens oh he he most certainly will you can't <laughs> stop him so yeah put that on your radar michael i'm gonna start giving him false leads on parks reopening. <laughs> <laughs> i was told this park was in trouble <laughs> All right, and with that, we're going to wrap up News Dump. We will talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.